what I'm going to create will be a Java application for you all, OK? So I'll tell you what I have done so far. First of all, I registered myself in AppZone, downloaded the PDF with the developer guides and the simulators and all this stuff, download the sample applications. That's all I have done. You can see here all the Java files. Java programmers would know. I have just the libraries here. That's all I have done. OK. Now <coughs> I'm going to start. Before I start, I'm just going to explain uh, what the application is going to be. OK. Everybody here would have a national identity card number. This is going to be a simple application which could decode. Uh, hopefully, everybody can see the screen, right? People at the back can, right? Yeah, this is going to be a simple Java application which can actually decode. OK, people at the back can't see it, it seems. So I'll just increase the. OK, it's going to be a simple application uh, which can decode your ID number and give you the year which you were born in, the day, and the gender. OK? It's going to be a simple application. I'm going to write it in front of you all, and let's see how it goes. OK. Before that, I'm going to use uh, IDEA as my ID. You can use NetBeans, Eclipse, whatever you are familiar with. I'm going to use it uh, IDEA for, because it is a Java application. I'm just starting up a new project from scratch. OK? And uh, it's a bit slow. So these are the small, small problems I could come across. OK. So <coughs> before, until it starts up, I'll just explain how, it's going, how is this application is going to work. OK? So as you know, OK, I'll just start the thing up. I'm going to call this, say, iDIC. And I'm going to make this as a web application. OK? I'm just going to mark this as web. I'm going to say finish and let it load. OK, while it's loading, I'll just explain what this application is going to be. OK, as you know, national identity card, the first two characters is your year which you were born in. So if I say 85, that means 1985. And this next three is 102. It's something like this, a day of year or something like that. So it's like something like if you are born in, um, say, February, all right? So it's January, 31 days, then you add up 28 for February and March again, so and so forth until it comes to your day you were born in that particular year. OK. Now, I will start the timer as soon as I start typing the first bit of code. So I'm just preparing the whole thing right now. Now I'm just going to load uh, the libraries I downloaded from AppZone. So I'm just going to create a library, and I'm just going to load it in. All right. So that's done. So let this timer start, and let's see how it goes. OK, the timer is going. Everybody can see it, hopefully. Yeah, I'm going to just start off by creating a normal package. Say, call it ID decoder. And maybe a class to receive messages from the server or the Aventura platform. Let's say I call it message receiver. OK. For this, I'm going to extend a class which was provided for me by the APIs I downloaded from the net. So I'm just going to extend it. And this is an, and I'm going to just implement one of the methods they have given. OK? So basically, what I have done is any messages that comes to my application, will, this method will be called. Easy as that. Now, before I can go forward, I need a class that actually can decode the ID, so the logic. So I'm just going to write the logic. Maybe I'll name this as uh, ID decoder. The actual decoding part is going to be, be done by this particular class. I'm going to write a small method which returns a string. So I'll call this decode. And if I pass in the ID number, it will return a string with a decoded value. Easy as that, is it? OK, first of all, I'm going to find the year which that person was born in. Okay? For this, I'm using integer because I'm going to use a uh, Java calendar class for this. So it requires integers. So this is how I'm going to go ahead. But uh, .NET or anything, you can go however you like. So I'm going to convert the message and do a substring for the first 
two characters, okay? And I'm just going to add one nine in front, 19, 85, 87, 86, so on and so forth. The next is day of year, all right? Now, <coughs> integer, again, I'm going to pass it to integer. Pass, message, dot substring, and again from two to five. And I'm going to put a minus one here, okay? Because Java is zero base and the IDs start from one, so I'm just putting a minus one here. And one more thing I haven't mentioned here is the gender. How can you identify the gender? The gender works like this. If this value, day of year, is more than 500, that means, anyone? It's a female, right? So for females, what they do is they just add 500 to the day of year. That's it, easy as that. So now what I'm going to do is string gender. By default, I'm going to say everybody's a male, OK? And <coughs> I'm just going to have a if condition. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just going to have a if condition here, which checks the day of year if it's greater than 500. If so, I'm going to change the gender to female. And from day of year, I'm just going to subtract 500. Is that that, right? Now, next step would be to find the actual date of birth. For this, I'm going to use the calendar class from Java. This is pretty much straightforward. And I'm going to just set in the data. OK, three minutes have gone. So I, hopefully, I have e enough time to upload it to the cloud. Let's see. So I'm just going to put the year here. And then day which they were born in, day of year. All right? And I'm just going to pass the day here. All right? So far with me? Fine. Now I'm going to use a simple date formatter class to actually format my message however I want to send it back to the user. For this, I'm going to use, say, something like day, month, and the year which they were born in. All right? So <coughs> now pretty much I just need to send the output. So I'm going to return something like this. You were born on and the date. I'm going to format it. I'm just formatting it to a, the particular format, the day, month, and the year. And then I'm going to say gender. Let's put a slash in for a new line. And say gender and put in the gender here. OK? This is all. Pretty much the decoding part of my ID is complete. Now I just need to receive the message and send it. Right. Now, <coughs> what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get the message here from the message I just got, get message, and I get the message. I'm going to just use a split here, a space split, and I'm going to take the uh, second character. You will understand why I did this when you go through the PDF. This is just a small thing, the, because the message format, to get the exact message format. And now, I'm going to have another string, says date of birth, OK? And now, <coughs> I'm going to create a new object And just say ID decoder and decode and pass in my message. So this will actually give me a date of birth. OK? So I'm assigning it to the date of birth. Before this, I need to do one thing. I need, yeah, I need to have a if condition. Just to check if my. Uh, whatever ID they have sent is correct. I'm just going to have a small if condition to see if the ID length is 10. As you know, the length of the ID number is 10. So I'm just going to have a small if condition here. And if, if else, I'm going to say date of birth equals um, something like, um, let's say, invalid ID number. Please 
recheck and try again. All right, it's just going to be a small error message I'm going to just put out. And then I have to send the message back to the user. For that, I'm going to use the SMS sender class, which was again provided by the API. I'm just using the sender class. Now, when I'm doing this, I have to give the IP of the server. For that, <coughs> it's a HTTP request, actually. I'm just going to give a HTTP. The IP is 203, 67, 45, and 6. And the port is 65182, and service. OK? Then every application has a unique app, app, app ID and a password. For that, I'm just going to give, for my application, it's currently app ID and password is password. So <coughs> I'm pretty much, I have made the connection to the server now. Only thing left is I have to send the message. I call the send message and pass the date of birth and then get, I'm sure, I'm sure, and get the address, whoever has sent the message to me. Pretty much, that's it. Only thing left here is I have to tell my application whatever message I get to send to the class I just wrote. Okay? So I'm just going to write that bit. So let's call I Okay. <coughs> and I'm going to give a several and now I'm just going to say, whenever I get a um, message, to pass it to my class here. That's all I have done. I say star and a hash, so everything comes to mind. Now what I have to do is, I have to, oh, one more thing. Before doing that, I'll put a try catch here. In case somebody sends a character or something, again, I'm going to get an error. So I'm going to put a try catch here to check if that's working fine. Now this is done. Now what I have to do is compile, take it, upload it to the server. Easy as that. OK, I'm just going to compile it now. You can see down it's just compiling. Hopefully it compiles properly. Right, it's compiled. Now I just need to upload it to the server. Connection just dropped. Give me a sec, guys. I'm just making the establishing the connection with the cloud, okay, to the server. These are the technical difficulties. You know, the connection drops and all these things. Okay, that's done. So what I'm going to do is I'm just okay. I'm just going to upload it to the server and go live within seconds. Let's see. <coughs> now, I'm still loading. I have five minutes, so I'm hoping I can upload within five minutes' time. OK, I'm just going to upload it to my application server, which I have already created on the server itself, the cloud. And I'm just going to upload whichever I created. So the IDEC thing I just created, I'm just drag and drop. And it's going to go through. OK, it's queued up. The rest are going through. Hopefully, it starts up. Uh, yeah, it's going. OK, upload is done. 